Here behind me in Caesarea is the Praetorium. This is where they kept political prisoners. When Festus, the governor, came in, he had discovered that there was a political prisoner who was a real hot potato who had been here in chains for two years and decided to review the story. It turns out it was the Apostle Paul. And right behind me in this praetorium, the Apostle Paul would have walked back and forth many, many, many times. He would have been held prisoner in this area. And somewhere in this area, maybe right behind me, though it's not very large, so I don't think so, but someplace else, right in within earshot, was a place called the Great Hall. Well, Festus and King Agrippa II and his wife Bernice, they came in to hear the Apostle Paul speak to defend himself. He gets up in front of these people, and they do say, Paul, now give us your defense. What does Paul do? He shares his testimony. He tells how he met Jesus. He doesn't really defend himself at all. He merely tells them what God had done in his life. And I love that because it's in this particular place where finally uh, uh, Festus and Agrippa, they, they throw their arms up in, in exasperation saying, Paul, you, you've gone crazy. Your great learning has driven you mad. Paul says, hey, you know that what I'm saying is true. And I wish that you would become just like me except for being in chains, of course. You know, I find it beautiful that we as Christians often want to defend ourselves and defend our theology, but I'll tell you, the world will never know theology. They don't care about it, and they will not learn it. But when they hear your story, they always remember. And Paul tells his story in the book of Acts no fewer than three times, and it's inferred many other times he did it as well, because people don't really care about the theology, though it's important, it's vital. But with Paul, it was his testimony that rings throughout the ages that says here is a murderous Pharisee who killed Christians for a living. And suddenly now he's preaching the good news that Jesus forgives even people like him, even people like me, even people like you. That's the story. You have a story. If you're a Christian, your story is of eternal value here and now in this world. People will remember it and they'll see Jesus through it. God bless you.